Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for the opportunity to speak with you today. I wanted to start by really personalising this a little bit and just ask, has anybody ever had a frustrating experience when dealing with government services? <laughs> no? Some of you might have been because you had problems getting to the right person or you couldn't find the right information. Uh, for others, it's a case of feeling that you're drowning in paperwork. Um, there's a, reason, a range of reasons that people have frustrating experiences currently, and we've been doing a lot of talking to people to understand what that is, and that's really what we're here to address today. It's about improving that customer experience. It's about making things quicker, simpler, and easier. So if you put it into your own context and think about it from a business point of view, but also think about it from your own sort of customer point of view as a resident in Queensland, what could we do to improve your experiences of dealing with government and make things far more streamlined? As I said, we've done a lot of research uh, talking with uh, customers, talking with other industries, other governments, and understanding uh, what it is that customers wanted. There's a lot of very good information out there uh, and a lot of very complex work in this field. But really, at the end of it, it came down to three things. Customers wanted their interactions with government to be simple, clear, and fast. Um, and that's really um, the headline uh, message for this strategy. And it's based on very much creating a better customer experience. So we will talk about some of the underpinning pieces um, of work that we're doing and some of the changes within government that we need to uh, evoke to make that happen. But at the end of the day, uh, it's quite a simple message that we have. As you all know, government services have been designed over decades. Um, the processes are well entrenched, um, and the culture that goes with that is well entrenched. And that's one of the things that we need to turn in terms of understanding how we're going to transform how we listen to customers and design services uh, and experiences that meet their needs. Um, customers today have very different expectations from those that they had 10 years ago, five years ago, um, even within the sort of recent years. Your expectations in terms of how you interact with other organizations, your expectations in terms of your own personal time uh, and the ability to do things at your convenience have radically shifted uh, people's perceptions and expectations. And again, that's part of this transformation. It's really understanding how customers access services and then looking to improve those services that we deliver. It's three small dot points up on a slide behind me, uh, but we're not underestimating the level of change, particularly cultural change, that it will take uh, to actually deliver this program. And as part of that, we really are looking for everybody, whether that's customers within the community or business as a whole, uh, to partner with us in terms of designing that and delivering that experience. In terms of the background for this, obviously there's been a lot of drivers for change. I've spoken a little bit about uh, changed customer expectations, and that was really one of the core starting points. The Minister spoke about the fact that this was one of the Premier's commitments. It was an election commitment, uh, and it's featured since then in terms of sorting out a one-stop shop plan. And during that point in time, there's also been a lot of other things uh, happening within government that have had an influence uh, on the shaping of this plan. So in terms of things like Commission of Audit and the Better Ways of Working report, which talk very much about a fresh approach to the way we work. Um, and a customer-focused culture, and the fact that business as usual is not an option are all key points uh, that have underpinned the development of this plan. More recently, you'll have seen the draft Queensland plan. A lot of the themes coming out of that are absolutely consistent to the way that we're approaching this. So it's looking at the collaborative open approach, um, which is very much underpinning this plan, flexible innovation, um, and partnership. Um, as being some of the key themes. It's also about looking at different models. This is not more of the same. Uh, this is about radically different models of delivery um, and really starting to understand what those might look like, pilot some of them, test them, get feedback and understand what we can do better and how we deliver better services for Queenslanders. Obviously, you'll be aware that it links heavily with the ICT Action Plan as well. Um, and the first of those themes within the ICT Action Plan captures some uh, of the major projects that we'll be looking at as we go forward uh, with this program. So one of the messages that I would like uh, to leave with you today is it is very much about time for a new approach. Um, it is a whole of government approach, um, which again, we come from a background uh, where 
there are different approaches that have been taken in different agencies and different services on different channels. And it's about how we pull that together to provide that consistent, seamless customer service as we go forward. It's very much focused on outcomes um, and technology as an enabling piece that enables us to drive uh, those new models of delivery. It acknowledges that as we go forward um, with uh, contestability and other pieces of work, we'll be looking at a scenario where we will have different service providers providing services. But from a customer point of view, the challenge for One Stop Shop is how we provide that seamless, consistent, easy to access service across a range of different service providers. So from a customer point of view, it doesn't matter who provides the service, it's simple and it's easy to get to. The benefits of this program are significant. It is very much a win-win. Um, there are a lot of benefits in it for customers. They get better services that are easier, more responsive, and joined up. And for government, we can deliver better efficiencies um, and improve sta staff satisfaction in terms of providing a sort of richer, uh, more productive environment in which to work. And there are a range of different things that we'll be doing to address both of those and make sure that it's a win-win situation. Within the plan, there are three objectives. The first one is to increase online services and at the same time reduce costs. And again, that's that win-win for customers and government. We've been driven very much by customer expectations in the setting of this as our first uh, objective. It was quite clear from the research that customers wanted to access information to answer simple inquiries um, and simple transactions online. Um, gone was the day that they would wait in a queue to see a local uh, government officer uh, or a state government officer to answer their questions. So it's very much coming from that perspective. At the moment, um, we have um, a mixture of levels of availability, but overall, from the work that we did and the research that we did in the background to this, we have quite low levels of availability at the moment. And I'll talk in a little bit more detail about those in a second. The other thing, uh, which is very, very clear and again substantiated not just by research in Queensland but worldwide, is that it delivers better efficiencies uh, if we can deliver more online. Online is a cheaper channel for service delivery. Customers get what they want and government can reinvest the money in delivering better services. So in terms of some of those facts and figures, um, we started um, with a big piece of work understanding the way in which government services were currently delivered, uh, what channels they were delivered by, uh, how the, you know, what volumes were delivered, what the process and the customer experience looked like at the moment. From that, we got a couple of baselines. The first one of those was that there was about 40% of services currently that had some information available online. The quality of that sum was quite variable. Um, and then there was about 28% of services that had transactions that were available uh, online. So again, in terms of looking at the opportunities for this, there were significant opportunities with quite simple processes such as making an application, um, making a payment, uh, even making a booking or renewing, say, your license, that we could do online that currently weren't available. And so that was the first stage uh, of the uh, projects that we've been looking at, is how we increase that availability. As you can see from the targets on the bottom of the slide there, we're looking uh, to deliver 100 new basic online transactions this current year and 100 in the following year, uh, bringing us up to the 200 that the Minister spoke about over the next couple of years. We also want to make sure that customers can get access to information better so that they can answer their own inquiries when they have them and save them having to call the contact centre or visit an office. Um, so we're looking to deliver 100% of information um, in terms of answering basic general inquiries um, online by the end of this current year. So some quite ambitious targets in there, uh, but we're confident um, based on all of the work that we've done so far that we can deliver those. I spoke earlier about the work that we had done in understanding how services were delivered at the moment and I thought you might be interested in just seeing some of the work that sits underneath this. As I said, we did a service inventory, cost to serve, we looked at the process mapping and from there we identified the high volume, low complexity services that were really low hanging fruit as far as being able to deliver online. We understood what the customer experience was like at the moment if you called 13 QGov, which services you would be able to get, which you wouldn't be able to get and how we got you to the right person quickly and efficiently. This is just some of the uh, work that we've been doing with each of the agencies to really start to map out 
what that looks like for the future now. So for every single service across government, um, we have the customer interaction points mapped, we have the current status mapped, and we also have the uh, delivery schedule mapped in terms of when they're looking to deliver that service online. Uh, it has been a huge piece of work, but in terms of the depth and the quality of the information that sits underneath, we've got some really rich understanding now uh, of the scenario and how we drive forward. The Minister touched on the fact that one of the things uh, that came out uh, when we had done uh, this exercise was that the reality was 90% of the customer transactions that we deal with are actually simple information inquiries and simple transactions. They're not particularly complicated and if we can concentrate on getting those things sorted out quickly and simply and easily, it means that we can concentrate staff resources and time on helping those people that have got far more complex issues that really require that personal service and that personal touch. The other important thing as well, uh, this isn't about a big bang approach. The approach that we've taken to the programme is very much uh, a staged approach that's based on a continual improvement uh, from customer feedback uh, and from looking at the take up. So we'll be constantly monitoring how successful the things are that are being introduced and whether we need to tweak and improve them as we go. The second of the objectives is about simplifying access and making it more efficient. And Minister Walker spoke a lot about the customer experience at the moment in terms of depending on what service you want, depending on which agency, depending on which channel you choose, your experience could possibly be quite inconsistent, quite fragmented and quite confusing. Um, and really we're looking at leading to very different experience in the future. So at the moment, um, one of the uh, challenges that we have, and this is one of the challenges that I throw open to you to help us to solve, is that we've got no uh, multi-channel approach that enables a customer to hop seamlessly uh, between the different channels. So a customer journey uh, can quite often traverse all of the different channels of access, and at the moment, you have to start your journey again if you hop between the different channels. So that's one of the things that we'll be looking at as we go forward in terms of simplifying access and making things more efficient. We'll also be looking at how we start to deliver things like one login to government services. Digital banking has been around for ages. It's a great idea. It works. People understand it. It's simple. And that's very much the approach that we're trying to take here. Rather than having sort of separate logins for separate systems, it's about how we pull that together and deliver one simple login that proves that I am definitely me um, and therefore you can have trust in interacting online and delivering these services. In terms of working in different channels, we're also looking very much um, in the face-to-face -face environment at how we deliver services locally and improving better local access to services. And that piece is being very much customer-driven, starting from the ground up and understanding what services customers actually want to access on a face-to-face -face basis, what that means and why they want them that way, and then how we start to look at different models a lot of which will be uh, IT-enabled uh, to deliver those better uh, services on a face-to-face -face environment for those customers that choose not to opt straight away for the online option. Obviously, part of the face-to-face -face strategy will be about how we encourage and enable people to become more digitally enabled and confident, uh, but we will still be committed to delivering good quality uh, of face-to-face -face services as part of the consultation process that we're undertaking just now. The other thing that will be coming out of this is much better analytics. Um, we've done a huge piece of research to understand where we sit currently, but we need to continually be monitoring that as we move forward. We need to understand how things uh, will be delivered better in future. In terms of better experience in reduced duplication, this one really comes to understanding the person and their needs. Uh, it's very much about joining up services around the customer and looking at how we can take things that happen in everybody's lives, whether that's moving home, whether it's dealing with a bereavement, um, and whether it's a complex personal family situation, and packaging up services in different ways uh, just to make things easier so that you only have to tell government once, for example, when you move house. This is our future model. Um, and for anybody who has seen the plan, there is a copy of it in the plan as well. It starts very much from a customer-centric perspective and looks at all of the things that we will be doing uh, to deliver that customer-centric experience as we move out. It does, when you get out to the outer blue layer, start to talk about the pieces uh, that we will be looking at to deliver and enable that. 
And as you can see, there are some quite big challenges um, within that space that we'll be looking to talk further with you about. The current ICT landscape when it comes to service delivery at the moment um, is quite complicated. As part of the process mapping that we did, we actually mapped out the service uh, delivery options that we had that were directly customer facing um, or around the channel management aspect. And we came up with a list of over 500 different systems. Um, that's probably you know, um, a reasonable um, estimate of where the reality lies on that. But we really need to start moving uh, forward in terms of looking much more at sort of shared platforms, shared data standards, um, and much more flexible solutions that enable us to deliver uh, this solution as we go forward. The programme for 2014 uh, contains a number of different component pieces that really start us off in terms of delivering on this programme. It is a five-year programme and there will be an incremental approach to looking at what comes next. I've touched on quite a few of the things already in terms of increased online services, creating a consistent experience, better analytics um, and introducing some new whole of government capabilities and also at the same time running with different models for face-to-face -face service delivery. We will be looking to deliver that through a range of different partnerships, both within uh, agencies delivering some component parts and a lot of it being delivered through industry as well. The progress that we're making on that will also be reported through a one-stop shop dashboard. So in terms of opportunities, what we're looking for uh, is very much agile, innovative ideas and solutions to help us deliver uh, on our strategy. There's no one big solution to this, and we're not looking for a one big system approach. Um, we're looking for interoperability and joined up thinking, um, and really looking to move in line with the ICT strategy to much more as a service and shared solutions. It is very much moving the government towards a digital first approach, um, and there's a lot of change uh, in understanding how we use that to streamline um, the government services as they're currently provided. In terms of the next steps, We'll be using a range of different techniques, as you'd expect, to bring on partners to deliver parts of this. We'll be looking very much at using some of the things around the SME innovation approach uh, to pilot different approaches um, and you know, understand what the potential and the opportunities might be to do things differently. And we really welcome uh, a broad range of conversations around the skill set that's going to be needed to deliver this and the solutions uh, that we'll need as we go forward. Thank you very much. Thank you.